Sanchez, uh, represented by uh, Coral Brasino. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Coral Brasino, mother of Corporal Humberto Sanchez. First, I want to thank you guys again, the committee for stand up for us and do what we cannot do. We can be here and testify, we can be here and talk about our kids, but there's things that we cannot accomplish without you. Thank you very much. And then I wanna thank, this is my biggest probably, to Taylor. After March, he gave me the courage to be here. I wasn't planning on doing anything of this, but he's a brave man. And Bear was a brave man. I wanna make them proud. Let's go. 26 years ago, I came to this country to give my little girl a better life, a life that uh, with all my efforts I will not be able to afford. One year later, I give birth to my handsome green eye boy. I raised those kids to love and respect this country and foremost to appreciate the opportunity to live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. It was never, ever in my plans to lose my kid at the age of 22. Today, two years ago yesterday, we flew to Dover with my husband and only my oldest daughter to the dignified transfer. My son in a flag striped casket and 12 of his brothers and sisters I will never get another hug or be able to tell him I love you. That day, to be honest with you, I was numb. I still cannot believe Bear was inside that plane. I truly want to run to his casket, open it, and kiss him. But instead, I have to hold my daughter standing next to me. Her legs were giving out from underneath her as she had just lost her best friend in life. I remember Alan and myself were holding her. The pain Abby was feeling was unexplainable. Bird protected his old sister. They were barely close growing up. She loves, he loves her. I'm sorry, she loves her little brother and wants him to be alive. In that moment, it's when I understand that I didn't have another option but to be strong. Even when my pain was probably worse than my daughter's, I still have to be a mom for my three kids and my granddaughter that she was only one year old. She was not gonna be able to raise that little girl Somebody needs to step up. I learned how to smile during the day and cry at night when no one was looking. My wounds were healing slowly. Just learning to live with the emptiness every day. I tried to live my life until this past March when this here in Sestari and I listened to Tyler testify and something clicked on me. I had stood in my grounds for over 18 months. I was not gonna get involved in anything politically. However, something never felt right in my heart. I am the type of person that likes to listen, not likes to talk and fight. I was being told too many things that that didn't match. And the story did not add up. What did really happen? Was I even told the truth about my son's death? 
was it? Something I learned about my son after he got killed, it was that he always stood for the people and he stood and defend the ones getting bullied at school, the ones cannot defend themselves. He was the great defender. Who was going, who was going to defend my kid now? Who was going to defend the wounded? Who was gonna go, who was gonna go to defend the ones serving along his side in Afghanistan? Bear was gone. I understand he was teaching me a lesson after his passing. I had to finish the work he was doing. He was helping, helping women and children to have a better life. Here in the United States, and I remember going to Camp Atterbury in Indiana, and I see all those kids with sandals and shorts, and the weather was gonna change really fast. So I went home, I started gathering clothes, shoes in the community, buying it with my own money. I just make sure that those kids have what they need to succeed in life in the United States. This past two years, I have been working on healing my own wounds, and to be honest, I really feel selfish because I am not the only one hurt and suffering. If we don't demand this administration to tell us the truth, if we don't get out of our comfort zone and overcome my grief to fight for our kids and their battle brothers and sisters, no one is gonna do it. Our kids deserve answers. We deserve to know the truth and why the government sent our kids to their dead. Our wounded return and their futures now altered forever. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen and women fighting their own demons inside their heads, feeling guilty for not being able to help their brothers and sisters. We need closure as a parents. We need this administration to apologize for the awful decisions that lead to the death of our kids. Admit the mistakes they made. Their name of our kids needs to be read aloud. And remember, <clears throat> and never be forgotten. 13 beautiful lives were lost on August 26, 2021.